Assalamu alaikum dear students in the series of learning C programming we are discussing dynamic memory allocation in C in the previous video we have discussed malloc function everything regarding the malloc function have been discussed in the previous video how malloc function is used for allocating the memory dynamically and what is the syntax of the malloc function and how the malloc function is used in the programming that have been discussed in the previous video with the help of the with the help of the program and in today's video we are going to discuss one more dynamic memory allocation function that is the calloc function in this video we will see how calloc function is used to allocate the memory dynamically everything regarding the calloc function will be discussed in today's video what is calloc function syntax of calloc function what is the difference between the malloc and calloc function that will be seen in today's lecture so our today's topic is calloc function as the name full form of calloc full form of calloc is contiguous allocation the full form of calloc is contiguous allocation and what calloc that it allocates the memory in the blocks and each block is of the same size while we are going to allocate while we are using the calloc function for allocating the mem memory dynamically the memory is going to be allocated in a blocks in different blocks but each block is of same size so here we can write it allocates memory dynamically in separate blocks and each block is of same size that is all blocks are of are of same size all blocks are or of same size as i have told you in previous video that malloc function is used to allocate the memory dynamically but in malloc function a complete block is going to be allocated a single block memory for example if i request there for memory for three integers that means complete block of 3 into 4 12 by bytes will be allocated by the memory manager by using that malloc function but here in case of calloc function the memory is going to be allocated dynamically in block separate blocks and each block is of same size that means all blocks are of same size third this calloc function as well as the malloc function both calloc and malloc function are defined in the header files stdlib.h that means these two files do do these two functions calloc as well as malloc are defined in the header file stdlib.h so now we can see what the syntax of this calloc function the full form of calloc is the contiguous memory allocation the contiguous the calloc function allocates the memory in a separate blocks and each block is of same size that means it allocates the in separate blocks and every block is of same size third the calloc function is defined in the header file stdlib.h now we will write the syntax of this calloc function what is syntax syntax why why the calloc it will take two arguments as i have just told you that malloc takes only one argument but this calloc function takes two argument first here i will write size underscore t and and size that is it 
This cannot function takes two arguments. First, size underscore t is nothing, it is the unsigned thing. Uns sorry, unsigned. It takes unsigned zero or positive value, not negative value. That means what the size size would be either positive or zero. No negative value will be accepted by this kind of function. And and means number of the blocks. How, how many blocks you want to you want for that program? How many blocks you want that the canal function is allocated dynamically for the program? That is going to be spelled by this end. And size is simply the size of operator. Size of int, whether you want to store the integers, whether you want to store the characters, whether you want to store the flow. That means that size is going to be allocated by this cannot function. Now, for example, here I am going to write wide calloc wide pointer. For example, I will write a 3 and size of int. What does this mean? This syntax. It means simply that here the yeah, this cannot function will allocate three bytes of the memory. Three, sorry, uh, three blocks of the memory. For example, here I will write simply this. Of size int, that we know that the size of the integer is either 4 or 2. Some machines allocate 4 bytes to the integer and some allocate 2 bytes of memory to the integer. And as you look that, that I am using the machine, which allocates 4 bytes of the memory. So, total size will be 3 into 4, that means 3 into 4, that's equal to 12. Total 12 bytes of the memory will be allocated, but in 3 blocks. That means, first it is first block, it will have 4 bytes, and it will have also 4 bytes, and it will also be have 4 bytes. By using this syntax, this it will allocate 4 bytes of the memory, each block, 3 blocks of memory, of size integer. That each block is of size 4 bytes. But, for example, if I write here, wide malloc 3 into size of int. By using this line, if I request the allocation of memory dynamically by using malloc function, it will allocate like this. It will also allocate 3 into 4, 12 bytes of memory because size of it is 4, 4 into 3 equal 12, but in a single block, that means 12 bytes will be allocated in a single block. But in case of cannot, it will also allocate 12 bytes of memory, but in three different blocks. Because I have requested for three blocks here. That is, that is why I have told you it takes two arguments. First one is the number of the blocks, and second one is the size of. Tick. And third here, right? Third, in case of malloc, it takes only one argument. Three, how many in values you want to store and what is the size of what type of data you want to store whether you want to int whether you want to care or whether you want to float accordingly the memory it will be allocated for that program by use malloc hope now you understood differences also between the malloc and the cannot function now it, the, actually, this as the malloc function returns the wide pointer, this all, the returning type of calloc function is also wide. Calloc function is also wide. Why it is wide? I have also told you in the previous video that it is a, wide is a generic pointer. We can type cost it into any other data type, any other pointer. For example, if I have pointer, I want to store integers in this value, and for that, I have declared here the pointer of type integer. That means int pointer ptr. That means ptr is the name of the variable that stores the address of the ptr is the name of the special variable that stores the address of the variable whose data type is int. So here it turns the wide pointer. That means 
Y is going to be turned, it turned the Y pointer where the, date, where the address of the first Y is going to be situated. We can type cost this Y pointer into any other data type. For example, simply I can write here Y, here I can write int, I am going to type cost it into integer, calloc, three, size of int, that is. By using this line, I have type cost in it, that means if I have declared here a pointer PTR, PTR is a pointer of that integer. So the memory for this PTR is going to be is allocated from the static because it's a static variable. Whenever memory during the static variable, static memory allocation is going to be done from the static only. And dynamically memory is going to be allocated from the heap portion, which I have already told you in the first video of this memory, memory, dynamic memory allocation. So, for example, if 2000 is the address of the first address of first byte, starting address, or we can say a base address of this memory, and 2004 is the address of second block, and 2008 is the address of the third block. Obviously, this, it will return, actually, on successful allocation of memory, on successful allocation of memory, the calloc function returns a pointer. It returns a y pointer. Actually, it returns a y pointer. But here I have type cost it into the integer. So, the, it will return an address of the first byte. Address of the first byte. Or we can say a base address here. And that is going to be stored in PTR. Now, this PTR contains the address of the first byte. Here, the address of the first byte is 2000. Or we can say the base address of, of the first block. Here, it is block 1, it is block 2, it is block 3. Because I have requested for the three blocks here of size integer. That means all these blocks are of the same size. It is of the four block bytes. This block is also of four bytes of size. And this block is also of the four bytes of the size. So, it will return on successful allocation, it will return the pointer, that means it will return the address of the first byte. In this case, that is 200,000, and that is going to be stored in a PTR, which I have already declared here. Okay, now I hope that you have understood what is calloc function, what is the syntax of the calloc function. Simply, calloc function, the full, uh, we can say, the calloc function stands for continuous allocation. Number two, the calloc function allocates the memory in a blocks, and each block is of the same size. Whereas malloc function, if we see a difference, here I will also do the difference. The malloc, the full form of calloc is a continuous memory, continuous allocation. Whereas full form of malloc is the memory allocation. Number two, the calloc function allocates the memory in dynamically allocates the memory in blocks, and each block is of the same size. Whereas, the malloc function allocates the memory in a same block. Allocates the in a blocks, in a single block we can see. For example, if we request a product, poor, poor, well, but it will allocate it. Malloc will allocate a single block, but cannot allocate in three different blocks of same size. Okay. And third, both malloc as well as calloc is defined in the header file stdlre.h. And fourth difference that is between the malloc and the calloc is that if, un, if by default, we can say by default, these blocks of the calloc function are going to be initialized by the zeros. By default, if these blocks remain uninitialized, by default they will be initialized with zeros. While as in case of malloc, for example, there would be a these in unsilent, these by default they contain some garbage values. Garbage values. That means these values can be either zero, they can be negative values, they can be they can be anything. But in case of cannot, the blocks are going to be initialized by default by a zero. Zeros. This is another difference between the cannot and the malloc. 
I now hope that you have understood, you have now known what is the difference between a calog and a function, what is the syntax of calog and what is the syntax of the malloc, and how these calog and malloc functions uh, uh, are different from each other. Okay, now we will write a program and with the help of the program we will discuss it is working as well. Here I am going to write down the, the same program which I have taken in the previous video, the activity which I have taken in the malloc function. For example, yeah. Simple program. Y man in PTR next N and I. Printer and that the limit how many that means how many blocks I want for my program, how many blocks I am going to request by using the cannot function. Second up. Second up percentage D address of and PTR equal to here I am type costing there it into integer calloc three size of int print here enter values for i equal to zero i less than n I plus plus second percentage D PTR plus I into size print F the values are for I equal to zero I less than N I plus plus print F percentage D PTR plus I into size three PTR that is it. Here I have write down the program the same program which we have discussed in the previous video, that in the malloc, where I have discussed with the malloc, I written the malloc function. First, here I have taken three integers, three, here, three variables. First, it is a pointer, ptr is one, that is of type integer, which is going to store the address of the, the integer value, address of the variable whose display is integer. And second one is n, and through variable is i for the loops. Print up enter limit. That means how many blocks, how many blocks I want for my program. Print here and here I have by using this kind of function, I have requested for three blocks. And size of int. That means size of int is four, that means three into four, total of twelve bytes of the memory will be allocated. Each block of four bytes size will be allocated by this. And it is return a pointer. Base address, it will return the base address, or we can say the address of the first byte that here in this case is 2000 and that is going to be stored in the PTR. Now, this PTR can then is 2000, and now by using this PTR, this pointer, we can access these elements one by one, these blocks one by one. Okay, here and print up and the value for I now we are by use this we can are going to initialize it by default, it contains zeros. Okay. For i equal to 0, that means value of i is 0, I can initialize i less than n, yes, 0 less than n, function is true. Second, percent PTR, what is the PTR? Here, I am going to calculate it. PTR, PTR, PTR is 2000, plus i, what is i? i is 1, and size, sorry, i is 0. Size, size here, in this case, size of integer is 4, that means, total it will become 2000, plus 
zero into four zero that is two thousand. So first it will find to the first location that is here two thousand. And I am going to here for example. I am writing that value. I enter the value fifteen here. Now it will control will go I plus plus. It will become one. I less than n. Yes, I less than three. Tension is true. Second so percent is here. Now in this here, now the i is one. Four into one equal to four. Two thousand plus four equal to two thousand four. Now the pointer will move to the next location that is two thousand four. And here I am going to enter, for example, new value thirty. Now i plus plus it will become two. Two is less than n. Tension is true. Percentage PTR. Now it will get calculated. Here now in at this case, PTR is two thousand and value of i is two. Four into two equal to eight. Two thousand plus eight equal to two thousand eight. Now the pointer will move to this location. So here, for example, I am going to initialize it by fifty. I plus plus I is plus plus. That means I plus plus. It will become three. Three less than three. No tension is false. Now it will enter. Control will go here. The values are, and in the output screen, the values are first I equal to zero. Again, loop will get started. I equal to zero. I less than n. Yes, zero is less than n. Print the percent. First, it will get calculated. Here, I have written the point star uh, PTR. In this, at this moment, at this case, this star acts as the interaction operator. That means value at PTR, value at PTR, not the address. Here, here only. This star acts as a pointer, but here it acts as an interaction operator. The interaction we know that interaction operator returns the value at the address. So first it will get calculated. PTR PTR is two thousand plus i i zero into size. We know that size of integer is four. That means two thousand four into zero is equal to zero zero plus two thousand equal to two thousand. Now Value at two thousand. The here value at two thousand is fifteen. Okay, two thousand address. There is value at address. Value at two hundred. Two thousand is fifteen. Here the fifteen will get printed. After that, the control will go i plus plus. That means it will become one. Now i i less than n. One is less than n is three. The condition is true. Print it. Here now it will get calculated. PTR again. PTR is two thousand plus i. I here in at moment i is one into size is four. Four into one equal to four. Four plus two thousand equal to two thousand four. So this pointer will move to this location and it will print the add value at two thousand four. That is thirty. So thirty will get printed again. It will get up. Loop will get updated. I plus plus, it will become two. Two is less than three. Tension is true. Print it again. It will get calculated. Now, PTR is two thousand plus I. I is now two. Two into four equal to eight. Eight plus two thousand equal to two thousand eight. Now this pointer will move to the next location. That is this location. And value at two thousand eight is fifty. That will get printed. Now i plus plus it will become three. Three is less than three. Correction. Because three is not less than three. I is not less than n. Because three equal to three, not less than. So this condition it will be false. So it will control go outside body of the loop. Then here next instruction pre PTR. That means this will get erased. Now, P. That's the memory occupied by this PTR will get printed. So now I hope that you understood the working of this Kellogg function.
Now, in the, in the next video, we are going to discuss one more function, as you can say, one more dynamic memory allocation function, that the relog function. Till the next video, take care and bye-bye.